Hi, this is Brett. And this is Ashley. And welcome to the January episode of today's Health and Wellness Podcast. Hey, what we're going to do every month in this podcast is preview and highlight what you'll find in the Central Ohio Health and Wellness Magazine, as well as on the Today's Health webpage found on WMNI.com, 1039JackFM.com, and TheBlitz.com. Plus, we'll have interviews, health tips, and more as the months go by. Now, Ashley, talk a little bit more about Central Ohio Health and Wellness Magazine. Central Ohio Health and Wellness Magazine is a monthly publication that I started about a year ago, actually a year ago in January. Um, It's a local health and wellness publication that gives information regarding all aspects of health and wellness for all ages. And we started working together um, earlier this year um, and, and kind of came, came together mid-2016 in regards to when we revised our Today's Health webpage on our uh, station's websites that we could share content back and forth. So we are able to promote each other, uh, promote content that you have in the magazine, as well as um, sponsors and information and health tips and all sorts of things. And we wanted to bring that all together in a podcast to help preview and highlight what's coming up in the next month. As, as well as just nice tips that could be listened to all month long. Yes, absolutely. Now we're going to go into segments with the podcast, and coming up, we're going to be talking with Elite uh, just in time for New Year's resolutions. We're here with the Trevors from Elite One Fitness. Uh, out of Central Ohio. They're here today with us to get us started off for the new year with resolutions and some great fitness tips. Yeah, yeah, we're excited to be here. Absolutely. Yep. Um, I'm Trevor Scott. And I'm Trevor Garber. And we're here with Elite One Fitness. And New Year's is just right around the corner. And the most common, the most frequent New Year's resolution goal is one that's based around fitness, health, or wellness. And the the only problem with that is 74% of people give up on their fitness goals and only 8% of them actually reach the goals that they set for themselves at the beginning of the year. Right. You know, so how can we how can we combat that? How can we help mm-hmm. our viewers out there, our listeners out there? How can we help them reach the goals that they have set forth for themselves? And that's what we're here to share with you guys today. So we've organized a nice three-step process to make sure that all of our listeners out there are actually achieving those fitness goals they set for themselves. And step one just starts with very simply, just writing it down. Writing it down becomes not only just a goal in your mind, but writing it down slowly starts making its way to a plan. And once we have a plan set in motion with our goal, the chance of success increases dramatically. So yeah, writing it down is the first step as far as getting our goals in motion. And when we make a fitness goal for the beginning of the year, we want to have an overall goal that that we want to obtain. But once we set that overall goal, we want to break it down into smaller obtainable goals in shorter durations. So whether it's lose 10, 15, 20 pounds, you want to break that down into small durations. How, how many pounds do I need to lose each week by the certain time that I want to set it? You want to set a date for yourself when you write this down. That date slowly adds more to the plan. It becomes a program. It actually increases the chances of success. If you just leave an open-ended goal out there, the chance of it actually becoming reality is slim to none. Right. I mean, we know from personal experience, when you set a time-oriented goal that you have to reach in a certain amount of time, you're more likely to reach that goal. Exactly, yeah. You kind of uh, you just get after it a little bit more, and you hold yourself more accountable. So we're going to break it into shorter segments. Break it down into maybe I want to lose one pound this week. Maybe I want to lose one pound next week. Whatever happens to be, a half a pound. Make sure you break it into smaller obtainable goals. And before you know it, you're going to reach your ultimate goal by the end of the uh, six months, year, whatever it happens to be. Right. That's step one. Now, step two. Trevor, why don't you share with us the second step in making sure that we achieve those fitness goals? Absolutely. When you're looking at the second step, it really is accountability, as we brought up before. You know, with accountability, I think self-accountability comes first. You know, when you can hold yourself accountable, you're going to be much better off as to reaching your goals. 
As far as self-accountability, one tip that I really like to do is put a picture on your screensaver. You know, put a picture on your uh, on your screensaver, your wallpaper. That's a little motivational to remind you every day what we're trying to achieve and what we're striving for. Yeah, is that on your cell phone? Yeah, yeah, I yeah. pop it on my cell phone. Another big thing a lot of people like to do is they'll put like a, a poster or a board up in their room. So every day when they wake up, they see it. They're a little more motivated. They're a little more closer to achieving their goals in a mental aspect. Uh, another big thing, too, is get a workout buddy. Get your family and friends involved. You know, you truly are a product of your environment. So when you get people around you that are on board with what you're doing, it is really going to help you uh, strive to achieve your goals a little better. Most definitely. Recruit that friend. Absolutely. You know, pull them on that journey with you. It's a positive life journey. You're going down a great path you set for yourself. You know, grab a buddy. Grab a family member. Get somebody to, to experience this positive journey with you. Absolutely. You know, not everyone has a uh, T. Scott waiting around like I do <laughs> to uh, help them out. That's exactly but right. We do help each other in every single day. Absolutely, so. yeah. It really, really helps keep you accountable. Another big thing is what a lot of people like to go into realms of is a personal trainer. And when I say personal trainer, I just don't mean some guy that works out with you for an hour at the gym. Find someone that keeps you accountable. A good personal trainer will always keep you accountable, not just in the hour they pay you exactly. or you pay them, but every 23 hours you're not with them you know a big thing we like to do is we make sure that we're texting our clients they're staying on what they're doing give them a little motivation are you on your diet today remember we got a big week coming up you know you got your wedding coming up you got your cruise coming up we really make sure they're on top of it most definitely holidays get them through that oh yeah facebook posts we're staying engaged with our clients throughout the course of the day not just that one hour we're with them right so when you look for a personal trainer find someone that is actually cares you know someone that's exactly. there for your life they're not just there because you know you're paying them for that hour yeah exactly i uh, i can't agree with you more there yeah so one and two so far we have write it down establish a date for your goals that you wanted to complete it by separate them into smaller obtainable goals to reach the overall objective step two Get that accountability team. Get that friend with you. Get somebody to come on board. Share your goals with people. Make sure you have a support system. Like Trevor Garber said, you are a product of your environment. Yeah, absolutely, guys. Make sure that we uh, we make it a lifestyle, not just an hour time slot in our day. Yep. Step three, the more we become informed about health, wellness, fitness, the more likely we are to obtain these goals. You're not always going to be in your comfort level. You're not always going to be in that little comfort bubble around your personal trainer, around your support team. So the more that knowledge is power, the more we know, the better chance we have of success. So that's where we're going to kind of give you a nice little tasty nugget today. Um, nice little science, but we're going to break it down so that everybody can understand this. We're not going to try to use any fancy terms to confuse anybody. But we're going to give you guys a nice little piece of information you guys can take with you to really help you obtain these goals in a more efficient manner. Absolutely. So today we're going to talk about what people call EPOC. And EPOC is excess post-exercise oxygen consumption. Okay? We're not going to try to say that word ever again the rest of this podcast. (laughs) EPOC. Yeah. (laughs) Because most people don't understand what that means. But we're going to simply refer to it as the afterburn effect. So if you hear anybody say EPOC in the future, you know that they're talking about the afterburn effect. Now, what is the afterburn effect and how can we make it more effective throughout our work to, workout. How can we utilize that to obtain our fitness goals? First off, what is it? Um, when you work out, you deplete oxygen stores in your muscles. Once you deplete these oxygen stores in your muscles, you need to restore the oxygen stores and these energy stores to burn calories. And, and doing so burns those calories after the workout's over. Now, the more we can deplete those oxygen stores during the workout the more calories we're going to end up burning after the workout's over in replenishing those oxygen and energy levels, resulting in a couple of extra 100 calories we can burn after the workout's over. Right. So long story short, the more we can deplete those oxygen stores during the workout, the longer it's going to take to recover, the more calories it's going to require us to burn after the workout, therefore resulting in a greater afterburn effect. Now, we have a couple different uh, strategies on how to, t- how to tackle this. G- Trevor Garber, give us a few examples on how we can efficiently and effectively take advantage of this afterburn effect. Yeah, absolutely. Are there we'll, a few strategies? Yeah, absolutely. We'll dive into a little more of what we're doing when we're working out to hit one more of an afterburn effect and two, burn more energy and calories 
during the workout. You know, that's a big way I like to look at it. It's all about energy consumption and using the energy that we're consuming. Right. So when we talk about burning fat, um, which is stored energy, we have to utilize and burn more energy throughout our workout and after, which is the epoch effect or the afterburn. There you go. So when we talk about I that. I thought we weren't going to say that. Which <laughs> I, I love the word epoch. It's nice. It's like Tupac, except better. <laughs> So All right, let's get back after it. <laughs> so as we go that. into the afterburn there, or epoch, what we're going to do is, when we talk about it, is say you're working out and you want to do steady state cardio. Now, steady state would be someone running at the park for a long period of time or on the treadmill, and they're just moving, which is great. You know, it's better than doing nothing. What about like walking in the mall, you know, power walking? Walking, like walking counts, anything like that. Steady state. So and we're keeping just, it the same the whole time? Yeah, we're just moving. You know okay. what I mean? We're moving our legs. We're, we're getting our heart rate up a little bit and keeping it at a kind of mild rate. Now, what a lot of people say is, you know, well, I ran on the treadmill for an hour. That's great. That's awesome. But there's other more optimal ways to get more benefits out of a workout in a less amount of time. It's not always about the duration. It's about the intensity. Okay. Now, we talk about that. What I'm going to touch on is high-intensity interval training, which is, you know, not as difficult as you think it may be. When we talk about high-intensity interval training, we're going to go really hard for a period of time and then have a longer rest than the time we went on the workout. So a big thing a lot of people like do now are battle ropes, slam balls, different things like that. So think about using that exercise for a period of time and then resting and then going back at it as hard as we can and then resting again. So it's, you know, it's, it's short choppy breaks and staying very anaerobic with our movements. So basically we're going to take the intensity level and we're going to crank it up. Okay. So instead of keeping it a steady state, we're going to get that heart rate elevated and we're going to get it rocking and rolling, you know, at a, at a, higher level right basically and it's going to make us a lot a lot more tired at the time right one it's going to burn yes it is it's going to burn more calories during the workout and it's going to burn more after okay so for anyone that watched our live at lunch on our facebook page they saw that we had the graph showing where the high intensity interval training is mm-hmm. compared to where it starts at and where it ends with the epoch effect or the afterburn yeah exactly so we have steady steady state cardio which mm-hmm. basically is jogging on the treadmill for the same speed for a long duration. We have high intensity where we up the intensity for as long as we can go, maybe short shorter durations right. and then kind of give us give ourselves a little rest. Yeah. Resulting in, you know, a little higher intensity workout. Okay? So that's two examples of cardio. What about if someone were to ask, what about resistance training? What about weight training using weights? What does that do as far as the epoch effect? Yeah, 100%. You the know. afterburn effect. Yeah, when we, t- <laughs> yeah. When we talk about uh, burning fat, uh, believe it or not, resistance training actually helps burn more fat. And it's proven that high-intensity interval training, like we just talked about, with resistance will burn the most fat. So as we talk about using those energy sources, when we deplete our body, deplete our muscles with resistance training and high-intensity interval training, we are more likely to have a better afterburn effect and burn more calories during the workout as well. Awesome, yeah, that's, a, that's great information. Because I, I mean, if you guys think about it, if you guys are using resistance training and you're lifting weights and you have to recruit and call upon more muscle fibers right. to move that weight, the more muscle fibers you have to use during that exercise, the more oxygen in each one of those muscle fibers is going to get depleted. 100%. Okay? So if we only right. have to use part of the muscle, it's not going to use the whole muscle if we don't have to. Right. So the more muscle we can recruit, the more oxygen is going to be depleted, therefore resulting in a longer recovery time, more burning of calories after the workout. Right. I mean, the more energy we're going to use to get back to our steady state or normal state that we're going to be at. Exactly. So for somebody who does these high-intensity workouts, do they have to do it as many times a week as if they were just used to running on the treadmill each day? for an hour or doing a lot of cardio stuff if they are doing a high intensity workout with a trainer do you recommend that every day or would it be two to three times a week or so so of course the more obviously the more we work out the more calories we're going to burn the greater the results the greater results of course um the good thing about overlapping these workouts is you burn the calories in the now during the workout but then if you have that really good afterburn effect after the workout's over but yet you come back in and work out the next day, you're still burning some calories from the previous workout, plus now you're burning the calories in the now for the new workout. And it results in a nice snowball effect that keeps things moving and keeps that calorie deficit um, because we know that our diets aren't always on point. But the more calories we can burn and the more we can kind of compound them and overlap that calorie burn, it's really going to help us 
reach those uh, New Year's fitness goals that we have set for ourselves. Absolutely. The big thing, too, with doing, uh, I'm going to call it HIT training, which stands for high intensity interval training. HIT training with resistance is the duration doesn't quite have to be as long. You know, a lot of people, they run, you'll see marathon. 